Good afternoon. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. It's time for another two hours of relevant discussion about online distance education. Um, we hope that we're all doing well and we're glad to have all of you this afternoon. Welcome to our fourth webinar series. I am Roel, the Training and Development Officer of Southern University Das Marinas. And I, together with Ms. Grace, will be your host for this afternoon's learning session. Before we start our program, here are the rules that we need to observe during the online engagement. This webinar is recorded. To participate in the question and answer portion, you may use the Q&A chat box. When asking questions, please introduce yourself and the institution you represent. For the registration, if you have not yet registered, please register using the link. The information in the online registration form will be used to give you the account in DLSUT's LMS. This will be the platform where you can access the webinar resources, give feedback, and get your e-certificates. You will receive an email that contains your username and password, and you will only need to register once for the entire webinar series. To get your certificate, watch out for the access code. We'll be flashing the access code later. Log in to this link, go to courses, click enroll, input the access code. You can either go to the modules and look for the webinar evaluation module or go to the assessment and answer the survey. After completing the survey, you will automatically receive your e-certificate. You can download your certificate by going to your profile. Here are some tips that you would like to share for those who are encountering audio problem. So first is to check your device audio if it is turned on. Second, if you are using earphones headset, check if it is properly connected. If it is still not working, use the built-in device speaker. Check your internet connection. Restart your internet and or your device if needed. Exit the event and rejoin again. Check if audio is working on the other application. If you are not using the MS Team application, suggest you download and use it to participate in the webinar. If using laptop, go to your MS Team profile settings, device, and select the appropriate audio device speaker. To formally start our webinar, let us, ha let us have our opening prayer. Let us all remember that we are in the most holy presence of God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, 
St. John Baptist de la Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Mm. Once again, good afternoon to everyone and welcome to our webinar entitled Education Technology Tool or Asynchronous Session. As part of our academic collaboration with the Commission on Higher Education, this learning engagement is brought to us by De La Salle University Das Marinas Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research through the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee. At this point, um, let us welcome to give his welcoming remarks, the Dean of the College of Education and the Co-Chair of the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee, Dr. Pat Alcartado. Good afternoon. Magandang hapon sa mga Cebuano at Ilunggo, maayong hapon sa mga Ilocano na imbag amalim. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Thank you for attending our med webinar series 1, 2, and 3, and today. We are now on webinar series 4 today. The webinar is Education Technology for Asynchronous Sessions. The delivery of instructions is very crucial, especially during this time of online learning. We have synchronous and asynchronous classes. I hope that we are learning from our webinars to help us enhance our online classes. During this time of online learning, we really need a lot of training to be equipped with the education technical tools for our classes, whether in synchronous or asynchronous. I believe that all of us have explored different education technology tools in our online classes. For this afternoon, we invited a competent person to share to us her expertise in education technology tool for asynchronous sessions. Let us continue to explore and develop the use in using education technology tools in our asynchronous sessions. I hope and pray that we continue to learn and learn and learn more. With our commitment to have quality education, excellence is our mantra. To attain this, we continue to learn and train faculty to deliver instructions effectively equipped with the available education technology tools for asynchronous sessions. The pandemic never stops learning. Learning continues, training continues, and this is webinar series four, education technology tool for asynchronous sessions. Have a wonderful spirit and educative field afternoon. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat. For the Cebuano, salamat kayo. For the Lungo, damo, 
nga salamat for the Ilocano Agyamanak Onay. Thank you, Dr. Pat, for that pre-recorded opening remarks. At this point, we would like to welcome and acknowledge our participating schools, our delegates. Uh, I hope um, the others are coming. So as we call on the uh, name of the schools, we would like to acknowledge and of course, we would like to thank all of you for joining us this afternoon. So I'd like to welcome our participating schools from Abra State Institute of Science and Technology, from Asian International Institute for Advanced Studies, Adventist University of the Philippines, Asian Institute of Science and Technology, Arnold Jensen Catholic Mission Foundation Incorporated, Batangas State University, Bulacan State University, Bulihan Integrated National High School, Calamba Doctors College, Capi State University, Caritas Don Bosco School, Cavite State University, City College of Tagaytay, Colegio de Montelupa. We would also like and please to welcome our participants from Colegio de San Agustin, the Cup of Wisdom Academy, De La Salle College of St. Benil, De La Salle Ipa, De La Salle Medical and Health Sciences Institute, De La Salle University Das Marinas, the Bineward College of Ordaneta, DMM Institute of Health Sciences, Don Bosco Technical College, Mandaluyong, Pilamar Christian University, Roja City, La Consolacion College, Bacolod, Laguna State Polytechnic College, Lyceum of the Philippines University, Cavite, and Madalag National High School, Aklan. Joining us this afternoon, we'd also like to welcome our participants from Madre Guidita, Martelli School Incorporated, Manila Adventist College, Marymount Academy of Paranaque, Marvelous Faith Academy of Bacoor, Mindoro State College of Agriculture and Technology, Mountain Province State Polytechnic College, National University, National College of Science and Technology, Oriental Mindoro State College, Rizal College of Taal, San Juan de Dios Educational Foundation Incorporated, San Sebastian College Recoletos de Cavite, San Isabel College, St. Jude College. Let us also welcome our participants from St. Anthony de Carmeli Academy, University of Negros Occidental Recoletos, Bacolod, University of Perpetual Health System, Dalta Molino, University of the Cordilleras, Bicol University, Isabella State University, Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University, Open University System, Sister of Mary Bannocks Incorporated, Surigao del Sul State University. University of Perpetual Health, Dr. Jose Tamayo Medical University, MOL Magsaysay Maritime Academy, Emilio Aguinaldo College, St. Thomas Beckett Academy, and we'd also like to welcome the participants from Pandan Bay Institute Incorporated. To the Department of Education, Cavite, and to the Department of Education, of course, to the Commission on Higher Education, Thank you very much. So at this point, before we proceed to our um, talk proper or engagement proper, let us have some mind energizer and engagement activity. Um, this time we will be calling on Sir Roland from ZILP to join us for this activity. Sir Roland? Yeah. Yes, hello, good afternoon. Magadang hapon mga ka-online. <laughs> Hindi online shoppers, kundi online teachers. Ayan. Sana po nasa maganda kayong talaga. Ayan. So this time, I would like to share with you a game-based platform. It's called Quizzes that you can also use for your asynchronous classes, asynchronous sessions. Uh, before before Tom, <laughs> say, uh, saying something about Quizzes, let's, I'll invite you to join a game. I'd like to share with you my screen. It's not, uh, you don't have to sign in or to create an account for this one. You just type in your, in your new tab. So open a new tab and join myquiz.com. So type join myquiz.com. Okay, so when the website opens, enter this game code 9384932. Okay, so this quizzes game, if you want to use for your classes, you can assign them 
to your students and they can play it at their own pace. So you don't have uh, to pay it altogether. But this afternoon we will play it in real time. But really there's no pressure to finish it at once. So just again go to joinmyquiz.com, enter the game code 9384932. So what you're seeing now, you will also have this uh, this image in your own screen. In your own laptop, you will have this same image as well, where you will answer the questions. And you can start anytime. If you enter, then you can start. You don't have to wait for the others. So we have one gamer already. Yeah, ano ba? Uh, sir or ma'am Bukayo? Yeah. Welcome po. And Sarah is here. Okay, welcome. You can uh, you can choose also a background or a theme for your game. So you can start anytime. When I click start, I will also start the game for myself. So I will not click start right now. Because... Uh, I'd like everyone to see the game code. The game code is also in the chat chat box. OK, Arvin and Rafi, welcome. So you can start anytime. Just click start. OK, that's is here. Let's welcome RD. So for now we have seven players. Okay. Yeah. So, pwede rin to sa cellphone. You can uh, type sa browsers in your phone, joinmyquiz.com, and then pasok lang yung game code, and you can click start. Ayan. Uh, Drexler Sibal, welcome. Art, welcome. Jopen, NCP, and Judy Torre. So, welcome then Rose Briones. Again, you can start anytime. You want to start now? You start. You can start now. And then, uh, about there are five questions in this game, and you have thirty seconds per question. Josephine Pelayo, welcome po, and uh, Nenep. Okay, so maybe, sir, well, maybe we can type the game code in the chat box for everyone to see so i can stop sharing and we can move on to our to our talk proper and then maybe we will visit this again before we end so that we can see the leaderboard and uh, okay sir roland thank okay. you so much we'll get back to you later so we can check the leaderboard thank you Bob. So at this point, as we move on to our webinar proper, I would like to call in my co-host, the chair of the Tourism Management Department, Ms. Grace Mejia, to introduce our resource speaker. I'm Grace. Good afternoon, Ms. Grace. Please go ahead. Okay, here. Yes, yes. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today, who is going to talk to us about educational technology tools for the asynchronous session. Our speaker is an educator, trainer, and instructional designer. She is the director of e learning integration for cyber learning and a passionate educator with more than 20 years of experience in the field. She studied computer science at De La Salle University des Marines and graduated Master in Management from the Technological University of the Philippines. Before she became an educator, she served 
the DLSUD community as the department secretary for 11 years. This experience contributed greatly for her, for her career as an educator. In 2011, she joined the Center for Innovative Learning Programs of the University as the Virtual Learning Environment Coordinator. Part of her role was to train teachers in using the university's learning management system. Later on, she became the director of the Center for Innovative Learning Programs, leading a team of five, managing the university's learning environment and training an estimate of 14,000 students and 700 faculty members. In 2013, our speaker became one of the Microsoft Education Ambassadors in the Philippines. In 2014, she was selected as one of the Microsoft Innovative Educator Experts Worldwide. And in 2015, our speaker was chosen as one of the only two educators to represent the Philippines in the Microsoft Global Educator Forum in Seattle, Washington, United States of America. Her involvement in the Microsoft community and her passion for education and technology led her to become a teaching with technology trainer, helping teachers from private and public schools around the world to integrate technology in their classrooms, both in a virtual and face-to-face -face delivery mode. She does free training for public schools as part of her advocacy. Our speaker is also supporting a disaster-proof education across the Philippines and worldwide. Calamities such as typhoons, earthquakes, and heavy monsoon rains often cause school days and classes to be suspended. She promotes in her talks and seminars a way by which learning can continue despite weather disturbances using various digital tools and ed tech strategies. Currently, she is the Global Director for E-Learning Integration at Cypher Learning, a global company that specializes in providing learning platforms for organizations around the world. She is responsible for developing educational technology centers for the company worldwide and designs online courses, resources, and webinars so that clients can experience the, fu the full functionality of the learning platforms. Our speaker also developed strategies on customer support training and delivery, content migration, and helps customers rule out their e-learning implementation plans. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Ms. Janelyn E. Padernal. Yay! <laughs> nag talaga ako sa sarili ko. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Kumusta po kayong lahat? Happy New Year and Happy Valentine's Day. Mike, ima Mike. Check ko lang po, na, naririnig po ba ako? Okay po ang aking audio? Yes, Ma'am Jen, we can okay, hear Okay, that's good, that's good. Okay, I'm excited po ako and very excited. Sabi ko nga kanya, Happy New Year. Meron pa palang isang greetings. Happy Valentine's Day in advance. <laughs> Parang kagigising lang natin nung isang linggo, New Year, tapos eto Valentine's Day na. But I'm honestly, I'm very happy to see you all here. This is such a great opportunity for me to always be in the presence of amazing educators in the Philippines. Tawang-tawa po ako pag may mga webinars po ako nagagawin, lalo na ang audience po, ang audience po, ang participants po natin ay from the Philippines. Kasi po talagang isa sa aking mga advocacy and passion is to share what integrate, what, what can happen and what can technology do for us para maging disaster po pang ating education. Itong, itong nararanasan po natin ngayon na, I would say, extraordinary time, extraordinary phenomenon. I know that this is something that um, kind of like um, uh, surprised us na isang araw, nagising tayo at lahat po pala tayo ay hindi nalalabas ng bahay, mago online class na pala tayo. Diba? Parang siguro feeling nyo, ano bang nangyari? Pagising ko, hindi ko na pala makikita ang aking mga estudyante. Time flies by really fast. It's been almost a year since this extraordinary phenomenon happened. And um, 
I know that we all feel the, the impact of this. One of the most greatly impacted of this is, is probably the education sector. Tatulad nga po nang nasabi ko kanina, we woke up one day, biglang inannounced, no one's going out of their house, and then alam ko ang, ang mga naisip natin tayo mga teachers, paano ang mga sudyante ko? How am I going to teach? How am I going to teach my students? What am I going to do? So, in a way, um, when when that happened, na imagine ko pa what's going on in the mind of um, most of the teachers and most of the uh, admin po natin mga school administrators. Na bigla po tayo lahat eh, no? uh, Most of the schools honestly got caught flat-footed kasi hindi po sila ready. Eh. So, pero, pero dahil tayo naman mga Filipino, resourceful po tayo, tayo mga Filipino teachers, very resourceful and we can always adapt to uh, whatever situation is presented to us. Natutuwa din ako in a way, na, not, not because there's a <laughs> pandemic, no? Itong, itong ano na to, bittersweet po to para sa akin, eh. This is um, a bittersweet thing. Why why bittersweet? It's bitter, it's sad because there's um, uh, a an occurrence or virus, I don't really want to say it, virus or COVID, no? That, that's threatening our health and our lives. Pero sweet in a way, kasi I, I think silver lining of what's happening now, most of the educators and education organization in the country realizes the importance of e-learning, the importance of integrating technology in our classroom. Uh, just... Um, so, you know, this is, and, and probably we're realizing na hindi po totoo yung iniisip natin dati na mapapalitan ang mga teachers ng technology. I know that now you know that. Okay? Technology will never, ever replace teachers. Kasi sino po ba ang gagawa ng mga content? Sino po ang magde-deliver ng mga content na nilalagay natin sa mga technology? It will always be us teachers. So, we will always be relevant and we will always stay. Sino po kaya yung hindi magstay? Yun po mga teachers na ayaw gumamit ng technology, ayan, baka may threat na sa inyong job. <laughs> but I am happy that you're here because you're here, that means you want to learn. So, um, and what I wanted to share with you today is how you can um, use different edtech tools for asynchronous learning. Kasi po, uh, one of the observation that I had when this um, extraordinary phenomenon happened, when, when we were told that we're not going out and we have to do remote teaching and learning, isa po sa na-observe ko, and I know that some of you can relate to this. But I po yung teachers so nagpanik kung paano nila gagawin to. And then what we um, did is we all thought of what kind of web conferencing tool will I use so that I can still meet my class in real time so that I can teach. Kasi ang mindset po natin before, and I can understand that, our mindset po, it, it, before maybe, you know, uh, this is kind of like what other teachers might be thinking or what other educators might be thinking, and this is this is not bad, um, that if, we, if we're not teaching face-to-face -face or if we're not physically present in the classroom, we're probably not really teaching or we're so changing our students kasi wala yung presence natin doon. Kaya kailangan ang, ang mindset natin, kailangan lagi nila ako nakikita. They always need to see me. They always need to hear my voice. They always need to feel my presence. And I need to be, be physically present just so my students would say, I am teaching. Nagtuturo ako. Pag hindi po ganun ang nangyayari, we're thinking, ay nako, isipin pa ng mga sudyante ko, hindi ako nagtuturo. And I can't blame you for teaching that, for thinking of that because partly, there's truth to that. No? Kasi gano'n yung naging mindset natin, na sana din yung mga students na lagi tayo nakikita. So, pag hindi nila tayo nakikita, iisipin nila hindi nagtuturo ang, ang, ang teacher ko. It's not teaching because I'm not seeing her. I'm not hearing him or her. But, but that's not true. And I know that we've proven that. Um, I hope that we have seen that uh, given the current situation that we are in where we need to do remote teaching and learning. Although... From the beginning, yung simula po, yung early onset of, of this remote teaching, I know that everyone panicked because they were thinking, I need to go online from morning until afternoon, be in a web conferencing uh, room just to be able to teach. Okay? Uh, partly yes and partly hindi din. Kasi 
yun po ang importance ng meron tayong asynchronous delivery mode of teaching. So, yan yung pag-uusapan natin ngayong hapon. Uh, I will share some tips with you on how you can get started with asynchronous learning. Um, a few tools. Some of the tools, there are a lot of tools that you can use for asynchronous learning and asynchronous teaching uh, that you can use. Most of what I will share with you today are actually based on my own experience as a teacher uh, who's doing asynchronous, who's delivering my, my teaching in an asynchronous way. Yan po yung isa share ko. So, ang binigay po sa akin time ni, ng, ng uh, De La Salle at CILP, seven hours daw po yung webinar today. Ready po ba kayo for a seven hours webinar? Ako, ready ready ako. <laughs> Joke lang po. Binigyan lang po nila ako ng, uh, I was given enough time to share um, things with you and to provide you with some of the, uh, to share some of the experiences I have. At, but before I move forward to that, I just want to congratulate De La Salle des Marinas for always always and CILP also for always organizing webinars and events like this that tr truly it helps a lot of teachers even even teachers outside of the Las Aldas Marinas um, to be able to adjust and learn something on a how and, and how they can probably quote unquote survive what's going on now now you, you remote teaching remote learning online learning e-learning these are the things na nag-a-adjust po tayong lahat and, and I know that um, in the span of time that we're doing this, we're beginning to get the hang of it. We're starting to adjust and we're starting to see better ways by which we can teach remotely or at least in a blended way. Kasi gusto ko po i-emphasize din yung, yung blended learning. What what you're doing actually is blended learning. Nakataon lang na yung yung face-to-face -face part ng blended learning. Ginagawa niya ng web conferencing na yan kasi we can't be um, in the classroom physically. But congratulations to um, De La Salle. Congratulations to CILP for um, doing all of this. Uh, we also want to thank you and the teachers for, for always attending this um, kind of webinar. I know that um, it's not only De La Salle who's doing something like this, but there are also a lot of institutions, which I highly appreciate because that's what, that's what we need. We need to help each other. And probably one of the tasks that you will be doing after this is to also um, share whatever it is that you will learn today and what you have learned in the past few days. I understand that this is already series four of the webinar that they are doing. Share it with your colleagues who are not present today. Okay, sharing is caring. Always remember that. Now, moving forward okay, to today's um, session, sharing. Uh, I think open yung Q&A natin. No? Please feel free to ask questions. Gusto ko, masaya saan, gusto ko po ang ating session today. Uh, it's just that I cannot see your faces. I don't know if you're um, happy, sad. I hope you're. I hope you're not sad. But given the situation of face to face, puto, mafeel nyo talaga ang taas ng aking energy. <laughs> Isa po yun sa importante sa atin ngayon. Kahit na meron tayong ganito situation, dapat ang energy natin to the highest level. Okay, what you're seeing in my screen now, um, nakalagay po yan adapt an asynchronous mindset when. Uh, the pandemic started and when we start staying at home, teaching at home, nakita ko po yung napakadaming comments and posts in social media about um, how many assignments are, are being given by the teachers, how many lessons are there, um, how, how tired and overwhelmed also are the educators because they have to go online from morning until afternoon just to be able to teach and bring education to every home or wherever our students are. That's why I came up with um, online learning tips. Um, I've, this has been shared many times in social media, but number one, and I have, I think, 10 or 12 online learning tips that um, I've shared before. Uh, but number one in there is adopt an asynchronous mindset. Remote learning, online learning, please remember it does not always have to be synchronously done because we need to give our students and ourselves ample time to read and learn, which at the same time will also give us teachers time to reflect and check whatever our students have already done. So, yan po yung number one tip ko. Dahil ang session po natin yan, asynchronous uh, learning, so dapat nandyan ang mindset natin. But um, also, uh, I, I think the, the objective of the webinar has already been um, shared kanina, so hindi ko na po yan uulitin. 
Okay, so moving forward, I'm, I'm sharing you. I'm sharing with you some of the industry trends. Ngayon, no? uh, what's happening in the world of work? Na ito yung future na ati mga students, and then later on, it relate ko po yan sa asynchronous learning. So right now, and sa online learning. So right now, ang trend ko sa industry, there are also uh, there are a lot of uh, companies who are already engaged sa e-learning for employee. Okay? E-learning for employee engagement, e-training, even gamification. Kanina Sir Roland shared kind of like a quiz. It's kind of like game also, but it's a quiz. Mobile learning, meaning you learn anytime, anywhere. You're mobile, you're moving, and you're using your gadgets. Video-based, micro-learning, and personalized employee learning. Why am I showing you this? Our students will work in companies that also does this. So in a way, pwede natin tingnan what's happening now um, is, is, is a preparation for our students in the future. They will be facing e-training and most of this training are done asynchronously. Asynchronous po ginagawa yan. Meron ding synchronous um, uh, training na ginagawa, uh, but most of the companies who are embracing e-learning or online training, um, at the moment, or sa ngayon, no, ginagawa po nila yan asynchronously. So, para isipin na lang natin that what we're doing, when, when, when we teach asynchronously, it's like also preparing our students for their work. Okay, we need them to be more work ready. And one of the best approach talaga that I can see in my years of experience um, advocating online learning and um, advocating e-learning is the hybrid learning approach. Okay, aka blended learning. Okay, so ang partner, ang, ang magka partner po dyan sa blended learning is face to face. So blended learning is a combination of face to face and online approach. So I think yesterday or the, the yung, yung series trinyo, I think you did discuss about synchronous sessions. So yung ka partner ni synchronous, that's what um, I'm going to share with you today. So it's the asynchronous session naman. So, combination yan. Blended learning is a combination of face-to-face -face and online. Yung online part, dati, that's the asynchronous part of learning. So, we put everything online. Students access it and then we meet in the classroom. We do some of the activities or we do our uh, discussion in the classroom. That's the face-to-face -face naman. Sabay-sabay natin ginagawa yan. Pero si asynchronous, okay, asynchronous learning, meaning learning happens anytime anywhere. So it does not necessarily have to occur at the same time. Like what Sir Roland mentioned earlier, yung game, hindi nyo kailangang itapusin agad, but you can do that also later on. Siguro probably, I teach ko din yung quizzes. Quiz is na yan na, na senior ni Sir Roland. So students in a synchronous learning, they learn most of the time at their own pacing and time. Okay? There's no need to be in the same classroom or even the same time zone. So, ibig sabihin po, I know that some some of us or most of us are still a little bit um, hesitant about asynchronous learning. It's because we got used to seeing our, our learners in the classroom every single day or every time that we are teaching. And we have this feeling that if we're not seeing them, they're probably not learning. So, let's take away that kind of mindset because it all boils down to how we prepare for an asynchronous learning okay it's always in in the way that we implement it and it's always in the way that we prepare kung you, the, the 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 reason why our students will learn okay learning is it's in the way that we prepare our lessons our materials and our activities it's the same with face-to-face -face class Believe me, how we prepare in a face-to-face -face class and, and, and being an educator myself, just like you, experience ko po both worlds. Teaching face-to-face -face and also teaching in an asynchronous way, which is online. And um, just like you, when I'm doing this the first time, it was also a little bit challenging for me because I'm trying to grasp and understand how, how is this going to happen? How do I know that my students are actually learning when I'm not looking or when I'm not with them. But there are so many ways by which we can do that and by which we can monitor 
or track the progress of our learners. There are many tools available now to help us do that. So we don't need to worry about it. What we need to focus on is in preparing and planning for an asynchronous learning session. And talking about that, I will give you, before I share few of some of the tools that I'm using and some of the activities that I'm using, I'm going to do um, kind of like a little bit of a um, live demo in a while. I would, oh, first I would like to share with you some tips on how you can prepare. Okay, this tips, this framework, I always share this with everyone because this framework, framework is applicable whether you're teaching synchronously or asynchronously. It all boils down to the pie. Hindi po yung pie na kinakain, no? Pwede rin naman, kung medyo parang gusto natin, may energy tayo, kain muna tayo, merienda muna tayo. Hindi ko lang po alam kung ano papa merienda sa akin ni CILP. Joke lang po yan. Okay, let's start with the pie. Ano po yung pie? Plan, implement, evaluate. These are three important things that I, that I have used. These are also three important aspects that somehow I was able to develop uh, over the years of, of engaging myself in e-learning in the world of edtech also. These are three important aspects. First, let's talk about planning. So you need to really start um, having a clear objective. So in planning, these are the things that you need to um, take consideration. So clear objectives is very important. It's very important to have a clear objectives. So what are your goals and what are you trying to achieve? What are you trying to achieve in an asynchronous learning? Okay, or what, what even even in teaching, what are you trying to achieve in, in teaching? What are you trying to, to achieve? What are your goals? What do you want? What do you want to happen? What do you want your students to learn? And, and it's easy for us because we have learning objectives. We have learning outcomes. So we have a guide on um, uh, the uh, objectives that we have serves as our guide. It gives us direction on what to do next, what to prepare. So that's very, very important to lay out your objectives. Second, uh, if you're going to do this institutional-wide within the entire school or the entire organization, you need to assess the capability of the school. It is important to know the, the, the school's technological and pedagogical capability to deliver and implement a synchronous learning delivery mode. Hindi po yan parang naisip natin mag-asynchronous and then we tell our teachers kung meron pong mga um, uh, school leaders who are here, here right now, this is also something, a tip that I'd like to share with you. This is not something that we, we thought of today and then tomorrow we want the teachers to do it or to implement it. We need to plan and we need to assess our capability, technical and pedagogical cap capability, both of the school and the teachers to deliver the asynchronous mode of teaching. Okay. And then next, we need to identify the barriers and constraints. We need to consider the learner's access to technology and internet access at home, especially kung gagamit po tayo ng mga online tools um, for teaching and learning. So we have to consider that. May mga schools po, what they're doing, and probably some of the schools um, who are present today are already doing this. So contact na sila ng survey early on to know whether the learner, to know how, how's the access of the learner to technology, to, to gadgets and, and to internet at home or wherever they are. So they're, they're doing a survey so that they can plan ahead and, and um, work on the instructional design that's appropriate to the learner's needs and, and access, okay? And then, of course, we need to get to know our students. Um, we need we need to know the, the learning styles and the learning needs of our students so that we can develop the right approach. And then, of course, teacher readiness. Capacity building for teachers on the use of technology that aligns with pedagogy and the delivery mode, plus the content, and then yung delivery mode natin. Asynchronous is, is important. We need to make sure that our teachers are ready. Um, yung, yung start po ng pandemic, it's somehow understandable that medyo in a panic mode tayo kasi some, some if not all of our teachers are, uh, or in schools, we, we got caught flat-footed eh. Hindi tayo ready. So, kaya anong nangyari, no, sa sobrang um, kabayata natin ng mga teachers, 
and not, not really kaba, but sa sobrang uh, kagustuhan natin to make sure that we deliver education and we deliver the content and we deliver teaching even even if we're not in the classroom. Napadami naman po yata yung gusto natin i-share sa mga estudyante. Pati po yung mga activities. Napasarap tayo sa paggawa ng mga activities. Napadami. So what happened was, na-overwhelm po ang mga students. Na-overwhelm din tayo mga teachers. So that is something that also kind of worried me a little, worried me a little bit um, during those times because in my head, I was thinking, if this is gonna go on for a long time, teachers and students might think that e-learning or using technology in learning is something bad because they're having a difficult time. But really, it's it's in it's in planning, okay? it's in the implementation that makes things easy and and the delivery is successful. And talking about implementation, okay. An important aspect in implementation is the availability of the content. We need to make sure that our content and activities are readily available and accessible to the students in the digital platform that we are using, whatever edtech tools we're using. Okay, and it also helps when our content aligns with the technology and pedagogy that we're using. So, for example, if we want to do asynchronous learning, do we have a platform that supports asynchronous? learning or asynchronous teaching and if we're going to do asynchronous teaching and learning students will access the, the lesson and we're not going to be there is the content available nandun ba yung content may ma access po ba sila baka pag open nila nung no digital tool na git na pinapagamit natin wala naman palang content content yung pinaka importante dito <laughs> ano po yung laman ano yung makikita nila do the platform that we're using. That's very, very important. Okay, and then of course, aside from the content, we need to make sure that we're using the right tools. It's not because there are a lot of tools available, we just grab one and use it. it it's not like that. We need to evaluate the tools that we want to use, the appropriateness of the tools, and and um, the the content, the you know, alignment of tools and content, and our strategy and pedagogy. That's very very important. If you're familiar with the TPAC model, technology, pedagogy, and content model of technology integration in the classroom, that's very uh, that's also a good framework to look at so that you can practice how you can align your technology with your pedagogy and with the content that you have. Okay, so have a look at what digital tools you already use or want to use and evaluate their potential to be used for a synchronous, a synchronous learning session, right? Okay, and then uh, after choosing the right tool, please make sure also that you choose the right learning activities. Okay, learning will not happen all at the same time and it will be in different places, probably in different time zone and you want to make sure that the platform has a feature that can support the activities that you want to do. Hindi po puro online quiz. Hindi po po oro online quiz. Yung online quiz is a good activity uh, that can be done asynchronously or synchronously if you want. Um, however, I would suggest that uh, we think of also of other type of activities that we can do that can be done in an asynchronous way. And, and later on, I will share some tips with you on that. Uh, importanting, importante po yan. Kasi, and then also, please remember before I forget, Quality over quantity. Yan po yung importante. Quality over quantity. It's also because I've heard a lot of um, comments and um, probably sentiments, not only coming from students, but also coming from parents, that their kids has more assignments now than they do when they were in the physical classroom. That is something also that I'm trying to wrap around my head and understand why, why did that happen? How come that there are um, students who have 30, 40, 50 assignments in a week when, when in fact, when we were doing this inside our classroom, it's, it's not, it's not that, okay? Nag-online lang po tayo, biglang dumami na yung assignments. It, 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 you know, parang times three yung idinami ng mga assignments natin. Please choose the right activities for asynchronous learning. Hindi po kailangan sobrang dami. We just need to choose the right one, the appropriate one. Okay? 
Yan. And then, um, so these are my recommended virtual activities. So, pwede po ang forums, debates, all of these activities that you're seeing, this can be done asynchronously. Hindi po kailangan sabay-sabay. Nakikita niyo po dyan, forum, tapos debate, and then Jen is saying that, you know, I can do this even if, you know, I'm not doing this synchronously. How will that happen? Pwede ba yan? Nagdi-debate kami, pero hindi naman kami sabay-sabay, hindi naman kami sabay-sabay nagkaklase. Pwede po yan. I will, I will share some examples with you later on. Okay? So again, we have Pi, Plan, Implement. Mamaya po yung letter E. No, I, I'll share with you the letter E later on. Okay. So, these are the virtual recommended recommended virtual activities that you can do. And then later on, I will share um, how and some examples of that. And then, of course, I mentioned earlier that part of the implementation is choosing the right tools for asynchronous learning. There are a lot of tools, digital tools available in the market, free and paid. It depends what you, kung ano po ang nakikita nyo na appropriate at kaya ninyong um, gamitin. Uh, but what I will be sharing with you are the tools that I have experience using and I know that it's effective because I've been using these in my class for the past 10 or 11 years. So I'll share a little bit something about Sway. Microsoft Teams, I know that um, one of the speakers in the webinar have already shared Microsoft Teams, but uh, let's see later if we have enough time, I can share some tips. And then OneNote, and then of course, one of my favorite tool, Neo LMS. Okay, so I will share first, let's talk about Sway. I'll share a little bit something about Sway. Some of you might be familiar with Sway already. I'll play the video. Uh, sa atin po mga moderators, please let me know if you can hear the audio. Okay, so this is Sway. This is our most popular exhibit. I'm a little bit closer so you can see this amazing creature called Squishy. You have ideas and projects that are interesting, meaningful, powerful. Now there's a new app that helps you easily pull together, format, and showcase them while still giving you freedom to adjust the design and reflect your own unique style. Introducing Sway, the completely new way to express yourself. Search a wide variety of sources without leaving the app. And simply drag and drop your content directly into Sway. Sway gives you the power to assemble and present your ideas. All just a tap or click away. It lets you create a polished, living, breathing canvas of your ideas on the web, using a variety of multimedia that you bring together with ease. Select a layout and style for your content, or let Sway do it automatically by showing suggested combinations for you to consider and change at any time. Seamlessly integrated with the web, social networks, and your devices, your creation can be shared as effortlessly as sending a link and will look great on any screen. Sway lets you easily pull together, format, and share your ideas on any device from anywhere. It's an all-in-one elegant solution that's unlike anything you've used before. Reimagine the way your ideas come to life. Okay. Yan. So, narinig niyo po kung ano yung pwedeng gawin ng Sway. Sway is a, um, it's a tool. It's a content creation tool that's developed by Microsoft. Uh, I think this was released November 2014, if I'm not mistaken, if I, if I remembered it correctly. So, Sway allows you to create content that's interactive and engaging. I mentioned content earlier. Uh, this is very important. If the students are going to learn at their own pacing, at their own time, unlike in a face-to-face -face class where we can always um, crack a joke or uh, make our voice higher if you want to get the attention of our students. Pag asynchronous po, it's just them and the content that you have. So it's important that we, that, uh, we get the attention of our students by creating interactive content content that can catch their attention. And Sway is one of the tools that you can use for that. So let me just uh, share with you. I'm gonna share my screen, again, a different screen, so that I can 
demonstrate very quickly how you can, what, what sway look like. Okay, para makita po natin sample ng sway. And, on, let me just share that. And wala pa lang aking video. So, here. Okay. So, this one is, I'm already logged in. So, what you need in sway, is you just need to create a Microsoft account. If you have an Office 65 in your school, this comes with your Office 65 subscription. If not, you can create your own personal Microsoft account and you can start using Sway. So once you log in in Sway, I'll just show you some examples muna. What's good about Sway? Uh, they've improved Sway over time. Na, nung sinimulan nung dinevelop nila ito, they've added a lot of uh, features already in Sway and that also includes starting from a template. You know, a lot of features like me, sometimes we struggle in creating content because we don't know where to start. It's not because we don't know what to put in there, but it's because we're thinking, how do how do I get started with a really good content, with, with a content that's an interactive, engaging, and creative? So um, what Sway did, they created, they added a feature where anyone who's creating a content can start from, from a template. So we have uh, they have, <laughs> we have parang ako yung may ari ng say, no? <laughs> So, they have a template when you want to write a blog for a project, a newsletter, a portfolio, even presentation. So, they have that. So, they have a template for resume. So, for example, you're teaching in business management, human resource development. Ako ginagawa ko po to. Um, I, I teach in HR and sometimes one of the activities that I ask my students to do is to, to write their own resume and and one of the best ways now in creating students resume or to, to, to create to create your own resume interactive na din meron na nga po mga video resume di ba? so this is one way by which our, we can teach our students so level up the, the the way that you're writing your resume create it in a an online platform or an app like sway so assignment ng students ko done in sway some of my, my content also done in Sway, and then I can easily share it to my students, and they can access this anytime, anywhere, in any device. So, for example, let's just um, say we want to start with the presentation. So, when you click presentation, automatically Sway will open that presentation, that template. Okay, let's just wait for it to open. So, once it's, it, it opens, makikita natin na na naka layout na yung yung sway and then you'll just have to edit it to fill it to fill it out so pwede niyo pong i-fill out yung mga uh, content may guide then what to put in there okay so that's one thing let me just refresh this so that um, it's taking a while to load there we just um, let's do that okay this one i think is a sample sway but i want to start with a template let's see here so once you open a template you, you notice that there's a there's a button here that says start editing this sway but before you do that you can actually have a look at what's inside ano bang format ang meron anong layout what can i do with this so in here lower right portion of the page can, if you can see my mouse there's an arrow you can click the arrow pointing to the right so that it moves to the next page okay so you also notice that there are already this is automatic you know it the layout is automatically uh, there and some text okay and and what's good about this meron ding tip nakalagay dito capture your audience attention start with an interesting story or an anecdote be clear and concise so when you start working on your content you can also follow these tips okay right there and then it says your main point meaning you the main point you can put it in this part now how do you edit this sway how do you start with your content so i'll click start editing this sway then you get to see here it says preparing your templates so this will open okay, this is called the storyboard or the storyline in here is where you can start putting in some of the content that you have it can be text photos and videos okay so this is your storyline, your storyboard dun sa iba. So this is where you can start doing that. It may, and then there's also a guide presentation title. So what's the what's your topic 
title. So you can put it in here. This picture that you saw earlier, you can change this. Okay. You can always change this picture when you click details over here. So this will enable you to change the photo that you are seeing in this presentation. Okay. And then in here, you can add more text and photos if you want. If Say, for example, you reach the last part and you wanted to add more text card over here. So just click text card. You get to see the plus sign over in the here at the bottom. Just click on it and then it gives you option on what you want, what you can add. So you can add text, you can add image, you can add stack photos or upload photos or images or videos from your device. Yeah, ito, may mga suggestion na po siya. If you want text, go to text. Media, you can uh, add video, you can add audio, you can embed any digital media here. Okay. So this one is for pictures. You can have a group of images that you want in, in different format. So this is, um, you can learn Sway in five minutes, I can tell you. I think if, if you can open like a window now, like another tab, Try to go try to go to sway.com. If you have a Microsoft account, open it. I can tell you in less than five minutes you can create your own content. But what's important again is think about what you're going to put in here. Okay. And how the students are going to access this. This is really good because you you don't need to be all uh, online together at the same time just for your students to be able to view what you have created. Uh, as a content, the content that you have created. You see here, top right portion of the page, there's a button that says share. So you can share this way to your students. And you have options here. You can select specific people or groups, especially if you're um, using Office 365, or those people or students that belongs only in your organization. Uh, again, this is uh, specific to Office 65, but if you want, if, if you don't have Office 65, just choose anyone with the link. Share this link to your students, copy the link, share this via email, or if you have um, a group messaging with your students, you can share and they can easily access this. When they access this, you also have to choose, are you allowing them to edit or just to view the content? So this is very important. Kasi po, pag pinili natin edit your students, can edit this way and change the content. So kung for viewing, just select view, copy the link, or share it in social media. If you want to share it in social media, that's also possible. And then they can easily have access to this anytime, anywhere that they are. So madali po yung sharing ng mga content. Remember kanina, I mentioned, it's important that when we're doing asynchronous learning, the content should be accessible to the learner. Okay, so um, I won't go too much into details about Sway because limited po yung ating time. But just to get you started, you can go to Sway.com or create a Microsoft account and get started with Sway. Okay, to get started, let me just go back here a little bit. So to get started, ulitin ko lang po if you, if you, if you want to try it later at home okay, or after the webinar. Once you log in, these are the ways by which you can start your Sway. You can... Click create new so you can create a blank sway. Okay, this is what a blank sway would look like. You can have your, your topic title here. You can add a background. When you click background over here, notice what happened. There's um, a new pop up window or box that appeared here. Okay, you don't need to open a new tab just for you to be able to search for image that you want to put in the background. The background, ito po yung background picture na naka. Uh, overlap doon sa inyong title. So, you can search in here. What's good about this? Meron po tong copyright management, no? So, for example, I want to search for flowers kasi Valentine's Day na. Yan. Dito na siya lalabas. Okay, so we will give you suggestions. You choose, just click, and then, you, and then nakalagay din dito, you have choice kung gusto nyo galing sa Creative Commons. And then you can easily drag and drop your chosen image there and then let's just put the title here getting started okay. so meron ka na kagad okay when i click play makikita ko na ko agad ko anong itsura niyan this is how it looks like so that's your title that's your background okay let me go back to edit if you want to add more content just click the plus sign choose another 
type of content that you want to add in here. So, ganyan lang po siya um, kadali gamitin. And then, again, click share if you want to share this with your students. Ano pa po yung ibang way? Okay. So, uh, uh, you're probably curious right now, Miss Jen Bitten naman, ang dami namin gusto matutunan sa sway. Um, I still have a few tools po kasi to uh, share with you. Um, but if you want, you can rec request Dela Sal again. We can have like a session on how to use Sway. Pwede po tayong magkaroon ng workshop training on how to use Sway. Okay. So another way is starting from a topic. So meron mga, pwede kayong mag-search ng uh, topic dito. For example, uh, grammar. Yeah. Pipiliin ko po sana mat, kaya lang baka mapasubo ako sa mat eh. <laughs> so, just click create outline and then Sway will create an outline for you that uh, based on the topic that you have chosen. So, it makes it easier for us to create our content in Sway. Okay? So, that's one thing. There. So, that's how easy. You see how easy it is? I just typed in a, a topic that I will be discussing in class and then Sway is now giving me kind of like an outline to guide me on how I can get started in creating my content that is accessible to my students anytime, anywhere. Okay, so moving forward. Uh, if you have any questions, po, please feel free to post them in the question box. But I will leave sway and move forward to the next uh, tool because I, I, wa I want to be mindful of the time. Baka po... I just wanted, no, it's, it's just that I wanted to share um, a lot of things with you. That's why uh, I'm sharing bits and pieces of the tools that I'm using. Okay, so let me share, let me go back here. So that is a little bit of something about Sway. And then we have another tool that's called OneNote. Okay, um, maybe some of you are familiar, already familiar with OneNote. With OneNote, teachers can use OneNote to organize lesson, lesson plans in a searchable digital notebook. Not only teachers, but even school um, non-teaching staff can also create a shareable content library. And we can encourage students to handwrite notes and sketch diagrams in OneNote. And this is also something that is made available to the students online and, and offline. So, pwede offline ang OneNote. Okay, let me just share with you this video about a school who's been using OneNote for quite some time now. Um, Ms. Zen, I think we do not have any audio. I'm not sure if they can hear your video, but dito po I cannot hear the presentation. Sir uh, Ruel, you were saying okay. something? Yeah, Ms. Zen, I think um, the video, wala pong audio. Ah, wala audio. audio. Okay, okay, oh, okay. thank you. Hold on, let me just um, share that again. Hindi ko pala na-include si audio. Okay. Let's include the audio here. Let's go back to it. As well as the fun note provides. Here at Tanglin Trust School in Singapore, we want technology to be simultaneously transformational and unremarkable. An accelerator of learning, not a driver. Microsoft's OneNote class notebooks have become a key tool to enhance teaching and learning, providing a seamless workflow for teachers and students, along with the powerful ability to ink 
on our pen-enabled devices. Teachers can curate and embed any kind of course content and, once in the classroom, can deliver lessons untethered from the whiteboard, allowing for a wide range of classroom dynamics. Students can access and edit lesson content in real time. Teachers can give personalised spoken, typed or inked feedback on student work. And students can access and respond in their own time. We encourage students to think visually and to take advantage of the power of the pen in the infinite canvas that OneNote provides as well as the powerful built-in learning tools. We have been supported by Microsoft Singapore and their education partner EduConnect to certify teachers as Microsoft Innovative Educators, Fellows and Trainers. We believe that Office 365 and pen-enabled devices will continue to combine to enrich teaching and learning at Tanglin Trust School for some time to come. Yeah, so OneNote is a digital notebook okay, that allows you, okay, that allows teachers to also create their uh, content okay, in an organized way. Plus, plus um, as, as you've seen, pwede po ang digital inking. Can you use your pen? Pwede po ito sa, sa uh, mobile phones, so mobile devices natin. Pwede sa laptop, pwede sa, sa tablet. Okay, so it's really a digital notebook. Imagine the, the traditional notebook that you're using in class. Okay, make that digital and that's exactly what OneNote notebook is. May mga pages din siya. Okay, let me just do a quick um, demo of that just to show you an example. Okay. So OneNote also has the same... Okay. characteristics like a real notebook only that it's digital uh, imagine your notebook where it has pages okay in in, in one note you can also create pages in a notes and what you can see here this is an actual um, uh, sample of a class notebook that i've created in my class where i can also add the name of my students and each of my students will have their own space here for their handouts, for their homework, for their quizzes. They can even add another uh, part here, or it's called section, where they can put in content of their own. As a teacher, I can create a collaboration space for my students. So collaboration space, okay, is a space that's open to everyone in a class and all class members can read or write anything in this notebook. So for, for collaboration, collaborative activities po yan. And then for the content, this is available, this is for teachers only. Teachers only to edit but viewable sa mga students. So this is where I can put my materials as a teacher and I can organize this. Hindi po kailangan isang page lang tapos nandiyan na yung aking mga content. I can always add a page over here. Okay. I'll add the page and I can put in here lesson one uh, grammar. Palagi ko napipili yung grammar, hindi naman ako English teacher. Okay, so in here, I have a page for my content. And then I can put any content. It can be text, photos, and videos. And my student can easily access this content. So in a way, imagine your lesson plan if you're teaching in uh, basic ed. And imagine your syllabus if you're in higher ed. You can mimic your syllabus in here and you can mimic your... Uh, lesson plan in here so you can add text photos and videos also here and this will be made accessible to the students now how do you start using OneNote if you have Office 365 account you can create a OneNote class notebook in your Office 365 account you can log into your Office 365 account and then you can choose OneNote in there in the apps that's available and then you can get started in creating your own class notebook if you don't have, for example, just to say you don't have it here, it's here. Okay, this is my Office 365 account. I'll click OneNote. 
I can see all of my notebooks here. When I open one of the notebooks, this, this is how it would look like. And then if I want to create a new notebook for a new subject, I will just create click class notebook over here and then I can click create class notebook. So I can start creating a new notebook for a new subject okay, that I want to teach and where I want to put my content. Okay, let me just close this one. So that's um, how you can get started with that. If you don't have, for example, if you don't have a an Office 365 subscription or if you, your school is not using Office 365, there's also one note for desktop. So pwedeng desktop yung gamitin natin. I will show you how that, that looks like. So OneNote desktop. So OneNote is also available okay, to any uh, Windows devices. Pag may mga Windows devices po kayo, may OneNote yan. Paano nyo po makikita yung OneNote? Dun sa, ang pinakamabilis is in the lower left near your start button, you can type in OneNote and then lalabas yung OneNote up, you can open it. So this is how it would look like. A blank notebook would look like this one. Okay, if you want to, to create a new notebook, just click file and then new and then choose where you want that notebook um, is saved. And then once it's created, you will see something like this. This is called sections of a notebook. And in each section, you can create pages. So I can rename this instead of calling it quick notes. Probably I can uh, put my uh, say name of my subject here and then I can add pages in here. Okay, so in each page, pwede nandito po yung mga topics nyo. Yeah, topic 1, week 1. Okay, then topic 2, week 2. And then you can also share this with your students. Very easily, you can share this. And then you can add photos, videos, text. You can embed um, YouTube videos here. And then you can use inking. Yung pinakita po kanina, you can draw. So if you have, say pen, yung stylus po natin, pwede natin gamitin yan. Pwede po tayong magsulat dito. Yan. So, you can do that. Or if you have an assignment, pwede nyo na pong checkan yung assignment nyo. Na parang nag-check din sa papel, but only it's digital. Okay? So, that's another tool. We will not go deeper into that tool because I am looking at the time. There's one more, one more tool, and I want to focus on this tool that I want to share with you next. So, I want to share with you Another tool, which is a learning management system, it's an LMS. So what is an LMS? An LMS uh, or learning management system is um, a tool that allows teachers to create and deliver content that can be easily accessed by the students anytime, anywhere. And it also allows us to monitor our students' engagement and participation and assess their knowledge even outside of the four walls of our classroom. So dito din mangyayari yung asynchronous learning asynchronous teaching just like the other tools that i've shown you sway in one note pwede pong gamitin ito anytime anywhere okay so one of the uh of course my favorite lms would be neo lms in de la Salle, it's known as school book so neo is a learning management system that supports asynchronous learning and that allows us teachers to create and manage all of our contents and activity whether that's um online or uh, even offline, kasi may offline version na po ang Neo. Okay, so let me just show you a quick video. Share with you a quick video on Neo so, so that we get to have like. Okay, let me just share this one. Baka makalimutan ko na namang i-share ang audio. Yan. Okay, so quick information about Neo LMS. Educators can choose from a variety of EdTech tools to enhance their classroom activities. But with so many options available, technology can sometimes get overwhelming. You start by using one tool to create class content, another to assess students, then another one for collaboration, and things can easily get out of control. Instead of saving time using technology, teachers end up spending more time switching between apps, moving data from one system to another, and trying to make various tools work together. There is actually a simpler, better way of teaching and learning online. NEO is a learning platform for schools and universities that provides all the essential tools for creating and managing learning activities. 
With an intuitive design, NEO makes learning an enjoyable experience for students and enables teachers to expand their activities beyond the classroom walls. Educators can build engaging classes suited for their teaching style without any technical knowledge and include their favorite resources and media files. With NEO, teachers can easily evaluate what students learn in classes using a variety of assignments, such as quizzes, essays, debates, and more. Assessment is simplified using our grading tools and assignment types, and educators can keep all student results centralized in the gradebook. Teachers can get instant analytics on student progress and quickly identify areas where they might need additional help. To increase student mastery of subjects, teachers can define the skills and knowledge they should acquire through classes, then track on a competency basis how well they understand the concepts. Educators can make classes more dynamic and adapted to their needs using advanced innovative functionalities such as automation and adaptive learning. You can trigger automated actions and personalize what content students see in classes based on their progress. Students have an enjoyable experience with NEO. Earning points and badges in games makes learning more fun and engaging. Also, being able to access NEO on any device makes students more self-directed learners and involved in activities even when they are not at school. Sign up now. Okay. So, now for a 14-day. So that's what what NEO is, what NEO can do in in a nutshell. So a quick um, overview lang of what NEO can do. So it will allow us teachers to create courses, classes that can be accessed by our learners at their own time, at their own pacing. So even if the, the, the teaching and learning is happening asynchronously, pwede po natin going available sa mga students natin na ating content. Aside from that, it's very intuitive. Okay, it can be, the, the learner can also track their progress, their own progress, hindi lang po yung teacher. Remember kanina, I, I mentioned na baka ang worry natin, how do I track my students' progress if I'm not with them physically? Kung hindi ko sila nakikita. So with the learning management like NEO, it's easier for us and the students to track their own progress. Teachers can track the students' progress and learners can also track their own progress. Okay, we also have different types of assessment, 14 different types of assessment that we can use asynchronously. Even yung quiz, asynchronous din pwede. Or kung gusto nyo synchronous, okay lang din po. But asynchronous din yung mga quizzes natin, meaning they can answer it anytime, anywhere, depending on the uh, the duration that you're putting in there. Okay, and then we also support competency-based learning para makita natin how well they're uh, learning based on uh, the set competencies and school standards. Automation rules, we, we also have that. We can automate a lot of things here. For example, what do I want the system to do if, my, if, if the system detects that my student is failing in a quiz? Then the system can probably uh, open a new lesson or a remedial lesson for my students. So that can also be done. And then we also have analytics, built in reports, so we can see how our students are progressing in the lessons. Okay. And then now, very quickly, I will share with you how I use NEO in my class. Okay. Very quickly lang po, so that we'll have time for Q&A. So I will share how I use NEO in my class here. So this is my NEO LMS class. This is, um, NEO is also known as school book in De La Salvas Marinas. So this is my school book, this is my NEO, and this is an example of my class. Uh, right now, I am teaching good governance and social responsibility. So that's me, my avatar in <laughs> Facebook. So all of my lessons, the key here is, in, is, is preparing all of your lessons already. So my lessons are already prepared, okay, courtesy of my co-teachers also. And this lesson, from prelim pa lang, from, from the, the time na nag-start yung class, open na po ang aking lesson. And all of my students can access this lesson anytime, anywhere, including the activities. So when I create that, meron akong getting started guide to guide my students on what to do, what they're going to learn in the platform. Even po ang opening prayer nandyan po. 
yung learning outcomes nandyan din. Okay. And I have here. So, ano po yung one example? One example is um, an activity that we do uh, synchronously on the first day of class, face-to-face, -face, getting to know each other. Di po ba meron tayong ganun? Tatayo yung mga estudyante and they will start introducing themselves. And if a student would talk for one minute per student, 40 minutes yung class mo, you have 45. May utang pa po tayong 5 minutes kasi one minute per student pagsasalita, 45 ang estudyante mo, you only have 40 minutes in class. So, kulang ang oras. But with uh, Neo LMS, I can create a discussion forum. It's called discussion forum. Okay. Where I can, I can um, assign this an activity to my student that will run, you notice the schedule here, this ran, ran from September 14 to September 22. In between this time, my student can post, okay, the activity is called getting to know you. So this is kind of like asking my students, okay, to introduce themselves in the most creative way that they can in a form of a discussion forum that does not need to happen at the same time. So let's just see how my student responded to this. And this is also good because it also helps uh, de develop the creativity of our students. Now, so they can introduce themselves in the most creative way that they, they, they can or they want. So for example, in my isa kong sujante, nag-sketch siya. Nakatakot buksan, nakalagay biological sketch. <laughs> Nisip ko ba ako ano yan. So this is how uh, she introduced herself. Parang resume lang, no? And then some of the students naman, they added um, photos in here or images there. May nag-create ng collage. Simula siguro to nung bata siya hanggang sa lumaki na siya ngayon. Okay? And then there are also students who created videos. Yan, gumawa sila ng mga videos nila and they uploaded it in the discussion forum. Ano pong na-notice nyo? Yung mga estudyante, no, uh, I wouldn't really say gaya gaya, but they're they're drawing inspiration from what their classmates have already submitted. If one started a video, everyone would want to do a video. Kasi nakikita po ito ng mga uh, ibang estudyante din. So another example, uh, I'll go to another class just so you can you can see how I use this. And this is again done asynchronously. I don't do this like um, uh, at the same time. Di po yan synchronously done. I give them time to create. I give them time to answer. That's why I love discussion forum type of activity done in Neo LMS. So here, I'll show you another way that my students are answering the getting to know you part. Okay, para makita natin how students are, this one, o di ba gumawa siya ng infographic about himself. Meron naman plain text. This one is created in Sway. So you remember Sway earlier? So a Sway can also be embedded in Neo LMS. So this learner created a Sway to introduce herself. So sa Sway niya ginawa ang kanyang introduction. Yan. So it's like they're creating a blog. Okay. So may mga students din na nag-create ng, uh, this is another Sway that the student have created. And then some students also created videos. So this is this is another uh, one type of activity that can be done in a platform that supports asynchronous learning. That the, the activity is called discussion forum. And this is very good because not only that uh, it helps uh, develop students' creativity, but it also promotes engagement. Okay, in increase po ang engagement ng mga students because they can see the posts of their classmates and they can always reply and react and comment on the post. Okay, another activity that you can do asynchronously in an LMS, na mentioned ko kanina, debate, and you're probably wondering, paano ba gagawin ang debate sa LMS na hindi na ma usually kasi debate is face-to-face, -face, right? We do that face-to-face. -face. Let me just see if I have a debate activity here. Let's look for one of my courses that has debate. So debate is also an activity that's available in Neo. Okay. That can be done asynchronously. Or oh, this one. This one is a debate. I have an online debate. Okay. And then here, this is kind of like um, uh, the, the preposition, no? Yung article. Kung ano na pagdedebatehin nila. So I, I, put, I can upload the article here. Include the link to the article. I can add additional resources here. My students get to read this. And then, okay, they debate on 
this. Okay? So, nandiyan ang ating uh, topic for debate. And then, let's see what happens in the debate. So, one student, so, in the, the, this can be group activity, but I've done this individually. So, this is how my students posted in the debate. Okay? So, once students started uh, the debate, so against daw siya dun sa Philippines will be a first world country. And then he explains why. And aside from the explanation that he provided, he also added um, supporting documents and articles to prove his point, including video. And this is something that is not done at the same time and same day. So this is done during the duration of the activity that I think this activity ran for like about a week. And then another student can challenge the reason of the other student. Pwede namang support. So you can challenge and you can also support the reason. And that you can see from here, mahaba yung thread. This means that the students are engaged with each other. Nagi engage sila dun sa topic, nagi engage sila dun sa activity. And all of this are done again asynchronously. So this is one activity that you can do in your classroom or that you can do in your class using a learning management system wherein hindi kailangan lagi naka-web conferencing tapos magde-debate po yung mga estudyante. You don't need to do that. This is just one example of those. And there are still a lot of activities um, uh, that's available in your LMS that you can use for a synchronous type of learning. So hindi ko na po isahin, isa-isahin lahat yan. Uh, because I know that um, in the interest of time, we also need to, uh, I, we also want to entertain some questions. But this is just um, some of the examples. And again, if you want to learn more about um, those tools that I've shown you, you can always connect with me and you can always connect with CILP just so you can, uh, if you want to have a scheduled training or workshop about this. Okay, so just few slides left um, to conclude our session. Yung last dun sa PAI, kasi PAI yung topic, yung, yung framework natin eh, plan, implement, the last one is evaluate. Okay? After planning, after implementing, make sure that you evaluate for success. And I have three keywords for you here, guide, monitor, and adjust. Always guide the students and, and the teachers on what to do. Monitor the progress, and just so you know, uh, how well they're doing, and then make the necessary adjustment as needed. Hindi po ibig sabihin that you did not succeed, succeed the first time that you're doing things means you will stop from there and you will not do it anymore. That means that you need to adjust and think of another way. Okay, so to sum up, to, to get started with your asynchronous learning, start with a pie, plan, implement, and evaluate. And with that, I thank you for listening and I hope that you learned something in our webinar today. I know that the time probably is not enough, but um, I'm willing to do extra more webinars and workshop as needed. Okay, thank you, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am Jen. Uh, a virtual round of applause for you, ma'am Jen. Maraming salamat po for giving us a very, um, very good presentation about asynchronous uh, learning session. Okay, so I think at this point, we are now moving on to our Q&A portion. And at this point, um, Miss Grace, my co-host, will help us to moderate this portion. Miss Grace? Hi, Miss Grace. Miss Grace, naka mute po kayo. Ma'am, can we check your microphone? Naka mute po kayo, Ma'am Grace. Mute Yeah, and we can now hear you. Please proceed, Miss Grace. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ma'am Jen. Okay, so to our dear participants, if you have questions, please ask your question in chat if you want to join our discussion. Yeah, let me check lang kung meron po tayong questions. Okay. So, 
So while Miss Grace is checking if you have questions, please don't be shy. Wag po kayo mahiya magtanong. <laughs> it is in, it is in. Ask okay, so, Ma'am Jen, I have a question po. Yes, ma'am. Um, in blended learning, what is the recommended ratio of synchronous and asynchronous session? So uh, that's a good question. No, I would share probably what we what we have done in in the last slide before. Because iba iba yan. It depends on number one. Dapat tingnan natin yung capability natin, no, no, in in delivering that. Pwedeng twenty five seventy five. Merong iba na ginagawa po nila twenty five seventy five. Meaning twenty five percent yung uh, face to face, seventy five percent yung online, or it could be the other way around. Seventy five percent ang face to face mo, twenty five percent ng yung online mo. In our case right now. No, parang nangyari mas marami yung web conferencing eh kesa doon sa uh, asynchronous session. Meron naman what they're doing is 50-50 like the practice of the Las Andas Marinas, 50% uh, online and 50% na in classroom. Okay? So those are the ratio na pwede. If you're going to ask me sa sa situation natin ngayon, <laughs> what's the <laughs> ideal? What's the ideal? I would say dapat mas maraming asynchronous session. The percentage of asynchronous session should be greater than the asynchronous session. Number one consideration is the access. And then yung bandwidth. Yung web conferencing na ginagamit natin. Second, yung health. Kasi pag lagi tayo nakaharap, nakaupo sa crap ng computer, it's also um, something that we need to consider the health implication of that. Yung, yung fatigue of uh, looking at the screen for a longer period of time, that's also a consideration. So I would say that with the situation that we have right now, there should be a bigger percentage should be in the asynchronous session than synchronous. Meron pa rin pong synchronous, but that's uh, may, maybe minimal and then just uh, follow some of the tips that I gave to prepare. Kasi importanteng naka-prepare. Kasi pag asynchronous po, pag hindi tayo prepare na ating mga content, then there's nothing that the students will be na able to access. Okay, so thank you, Ma'am Chen. And, okay, so wala po po tayong question sa chat box. Sige, Ma'am, may second question po ulit ako. So, um, what are the problems that you have encountered in a synchronous session? And then, um, can you share to us uh, how, uh, okay, what are the problems that you have encountered in asynchronous sessions, ma'am? What are the problems that you have encountered in asynchronous session? Okay, so I would probably share your experience when I was just starting, and the students are also starting uh, with the asynchronous session. And this is probably a common problem among the teachers before. Uh, it's not really the device, it's not the technology, but it's in getting my students to access and read the lessons that I'm uploading. Kasi yung, yung, kung, kung yung mga learners po natin, bagbago lang din sila sa asynchronous session, meron silang tendency that if the teacher is not looking, then I'm not studying. But there should always be a way for us to, to correct that and check that. Yung mga students ko po, sanay na sila sa asynchronous and alam nila that when I give something, um, th that will be accessed anytime, anywhere. Pag nag-synchronous session po kami, dun po papasok yung uh, discussion based on the lessons that I have uploaded. And if they did not read, ito po ang gagawin ng mga students. Pag tinanong ko sila, have you read the lesson that I have um, uploaded in the, in the learning management system? Walang sasagot, so kabado ka na, alam mo na, na hindi sila nagbasa. Ilang araw pa yung hindi nagkita, ilang linggo but they did not read. What they will do, they will start reading. Bubuksan nila yung, yung LMS. They will start reading just so they can participate in the discussion. But the, and they will think that I'm not seeing that. So they will start ano na, They will start engaging. But the good thing about Neo LMS, makikita ko kung sino yung biglang nag-online. Makikita ko kung kailan nila in-access yung lesson. And that's also one thing that I share with my students. I, I can monitor what's going on. So if, if we're doing a synchronous session, you have to make sure that you read, you watch, you participate in, in the activity. That's just, I think, one of the things to challenge um, in, in a synchronous session. But there's always a way to fix that. 
there's always a way to fix that. And that's how I fixed it. <laughs> Make sure then also na pag binigyan nyo sila na babasahin, pag nag-synchronous session kayo, may review, may discussion about those topics. Kasi pag wala na, sabi ng mga sudyante mo, ay, hindi naman talaga tayo tatanungin ni Ma'am Jen dyan, so it's okay not to read or not to access. Yeah. So thank you for that, Ma'am Jen. And then, um, can you share to us some tips on how to make our asynchronous classes more engaging, more fun for our students? Uh, number one tip, have a fun and engaging activity. Yung mga activities po. Okay? Like what I've mentioned, it's not always an online quiz. <laughs> it's not all, Or even if you want an online quiz, make your quiz interactive. Include videos, audios, and images in your quiz uh, so that when the learners access it, makikita nila na, ay, yung quizzes ko may video or yung quizzes ko, I can hear my teacher's voice. Or when you create your content, make sure that your content is media rich. Wag po plain text. <laughs> Wag po plain text. Kapag plain text, Im imagine yourself, put yourself in the shoes of your students. If you're reading something that's online, the plain text, you, you also lose interest. It's important that the content that we're putting in there is interactive and engaging. Na rin. And how do you do that? Make use, make, make your content media rich. There's a lot of things that you can do to make your content engaging. Use mul multimedia, use videos, use images audio, um, there's an infographics, and please don't make your ano, lessons na sobrang haba. <laughs> Hindi po dahil mahaba yung lesson natin, ibig sabihin engaging siya. <laughs> so, you know, parang micro lessons lang po yung gagawin, pero malaman. Sub may substance yung ating mga lesson. And then yung mga the think of activities like yung pinakita ni Sir Roland kanina, very interactive yun yung quiz na mm -hmm. they can do uh, even if they're not together you can do that yung debate po is um one of the things that makes my asynchronous session lively kasi talaga yung mga estudyante kahit hindi ko nakikita pag tingin ko ang haba-haba na ng debate nila ibig sabihin engage po sila doon so it's always in the activity and the way that we create our content okay so maraming salamat ma'am uh, ma'am Jen Sir Well. Hello, Ma'am Grace. I think we have some questions in uh, our live event chat. So if we can have um siguro questions probably before we finally uh, end our QA. Uh, like I have here one, so if I may ask this one from um Miss Eloisa. Uh, as a teacher using a synchronous platform such as Neo LMS. How do you manage giving feedback and evaluation given that at one time you might have to check a couple of hundred submissions? Any suggestion for an efficient feedback evaluation method? Nam Jen. I like that question. I really like it. This is my answer. Quality over quantity. You don't want to check hundreds of submissions, then don't give hundreds of assessments also. That's one thing. That's one thing. It's all always quality over quantity. Kapag marami po tayong binigay na assessment, marami din tayong chechekan. And, and feedback is very important to our learners. Kailangan po ang feedback natin instant. no? So for example, you're giving essays. Sa loob na isang linggo, tigdilimang essay kada isang araw, you have 40 in a class and you have how many sections? That's already hundreds. Pero kung bigay tayo ng one essay, that's, that's um, uh, very high level ng essay natin, isa lang yun, pero sasagutan nila yun within two weeks. Imagine, imagine that alone. Is that essay probably is enough to cover the entire lesson for for an entire semester? That that's what I'm saying. I I, I really like that this question. It's good that Miss Eloisa asked this. Because ito po yung common problem talaga. Hindi lang po teachers, ma'am, ang may problema dito. Hundreds of submissions to check. Imagine students would have twice to answer and to accomplish also. Kaya na, na, kaya na overwhelm ang ating mga estudyante. So, para maging efficient ang ating feedback at ang ating evaluation sa ating mga students, wag din po masyadong marami. There should always be a balance uh, in, in giving assessments kasi importante na pag nag-submit sila, instant ang feedback. Kung quiz yan, automatically, new LMS checks the quiz. Pero pag essay, debate, discussion forum, 
kailangan basahin natin yung mga yung mga sinasubmit nila and we need to give really a good feedback on what they have uh, submitted so that they feel that we are also paying attention to what they are doing imagine kung sobrang dami so ang efficiency to be efficient wag po masyadong marami there should always be a balance so well sorry lang po yes. meron po kasing tanong dito i just want to address yes, yes, um, please, yeah. Uh, nalagpasan po natin yun eh. Uh, yes. It's about here. How will you solve the chronic problem of teacher now having students not opening their webcam even just for a while? Ayan, gusto ko pong i-address yung tanong. While we want our students to, to open their um, camera or webcam while we're doing our classes, please uh, take into consideration also yung uh, privacy and security that is why also before you even start your your lessons or your online classes always let people know that you're going to record the session that they will be asked if they want to open their cameras okay so um lalo na po kung sa basic ed i have a i have a 11 year old niece and and they're doing zoom most of the time and sometimes I would look at, at her camera to see if it's open. I also don't want it to be open all the time. Kasi mga bata po yan eh. Mm -hmm. Those are minor. So um, I would say that you also have to consider security and privacy of our learners in terms of, you know, asking them to open their web. I know why we want that. Uh, because we want to see if they're really there. Lalo na kung nakamute yung mic, ganun tayo sigurado kung, <laughs> kung nandun sila. But um, there will always be activities that we can think of that, will engage our students in a, in a synchronous class or web conferencing class. Thank you, Ma'am Jen. Uh, by the way, that's a question from Sir Alvin Ignao of San Sebastian College Recoletos de Cavite. Hello, sir. Thank you for sending your question. And I think we have another one. This is the last question. Um, the question uh, goes like this. Does new LMS offer free access or subscription for individual faculty if they're institution does not support their subscription, what would its limitation be if there is a free subscription against the paid one? I'm saying. Okay. So first question, there's a free subscription for not more than 400 students for Neo LMS. There's also a, uh, there's a website you can go to neolms.com to see the table of comparison of free and paid. Mm. Um, so for, for teachers, individual teachers who, who wants to try, you can create your um, uh, free account. Just go to neolms.com and subscribe to a free plan, not exceeding 400 students. Madami na din, you can create lessons, you can create quizzes, you can use the grade book, you can do gamification in a free plan. Uh, what else? There's just a lot of um, features or that's present in the free plan that's also in in the subscribe subscription uh, plan. So, pwede nyo pong i-visit yung ating um, uh, site. Sir Ruel, uh, before yes. lang po, baka makalimutan ko, para sa mga yes. teacher, I shared po a link to Sir Paul earlier. To those who are present in today's webinar, you can go to the link at uh, teachertraining.neolms.com. You can create uh -huh. an account there. So you can, you can uh, create an account and once you create an account, um, you will be asked for an access code. Just key in student as an access code. So, well, very quickly, lang, please allow me to share this because the teachers yeah. will, w once they go to this um, site, okay, uh, neo uh, teacher training .neo -lms .com. Once you go to this site, hmm. click sign up, and then student is the access code. What's going to happen? You will be um, you will have an account in our training portal for teachers on how to use Neo LMS. This is also kind of like an asynchronous way of learning. So automatically you will be enrolled in the course called Getting Started with Neo LMS. And not only that, meron pong certificate na makukuha kayo once na nag, nag, nag uh, sign up po kayo. Uh, you, auto you will automatically be awarded with the certificate. So once you go to teachertraining.neolms.com, click sign up. Um, key in student as an access code and then click continue to register. Dito po sa uh, country, oh this is already in, in the Philippines, so automatic po yan na 
um, makakaroon kayo ng account and you will be enrolled in our self-paced training course on how to get started with NEO. So that's also kind of like an asynchronous way and then you get your certificate. All right. Thank you so much. For, thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Ma'am Zen. So thank you for giving us a very good presentation this afternoon. I'm sure we, uh, our participants have learned a lot from that presentation. And at this point, we would like to present to you our, the certificate of appreciation. So we would like to call, uh, call back Ms. Grace to present the certificate, Ma'am Grace. Yes, so maraming maraming salamat po, Ma'am Jen. And on behalf of the organizing team, may I present this certificate. The La Salle University Des Marinas would like to give this certificate of appreciation to you, Ma'am Jen, for being the resource speaker in the webinar on educational technology tool for a synchronous session held this 27th day of January 2021, signed by Dr. Marco Saez, our Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, and Brother Gus L. Bukir, FSC President and Chancellor of DLSE. Again, maraming maraming salamat po, Ms. Jeneline Paderna. Thank Always you a pleasure po. Thank you so much po. Thank you, Ma'am Zen. Thank you, Ma'am Grace, for presenting the certificate. Marami pong salamat for joining us this afternoon. But before we come up, uh, we proceed to the next part of our program and finally end our session for this afternoon. Um, let us check if Sir Roland has an update regarding our engagement earlier about the game. Sir Roland, would you like to share some updates? Yeah, um, okay. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, I, I'll share my screen, okay? Okay. Uh, here it goes. Stop sharing. <clears throat> so, is it, is it on? Wait. No, I'll click share again. Okay, it's here. There, so, uh, this is the result of the quizzes.com. So number one, we have NCP with 4,650 points, followed by Joy with 4,350 points, and one Stark with 4,170. So those are our top three players. Actually, there are five players who got all answers correct, five. And then uh, from 25 players who started, 11 have completed it. Ayan, so merong iba na hindi nakatapos. And uh, dito, uh, and I was I was thinking why was it completed when I did not click end. I think somebody clicked end, so it was completed. Now, this would not happen if you are creating a quizzes in your class. So in uh, in quizzes, if you are interested in quizzes, you go to quizzes.com and then create an account, a teacher account. Because with the teacher account, you can create classes and uh, assign uh, quizzes as homeworks, or you can play it live when you have your synchronous session. So pwede siyang synchronous, pwede rin siyang asynchronous and can be assigned as a homework. But homework naman, you can give it you know, a number of days for them to finish kasi pag asynchronous, ano siya, uh, self-paced. So they can answer the, the quiz at their own time. And at kung napansin nyo, maganda yung interactive ang quizzes kasi every time na sumasagot ka ng tama, merong meme na lumalabas, I, I'm sure your kids will love it. And then, kung mali naman, meron din. So, ayan. And then, it has a very interesting also background music. So, I'm sure your class will love playing quizzes. So, yun lang po. Thank you very much, sir. Salamat po, sir Roland. And to all who joined us in this particular engagement sa quizzes, maraming salamat po. Now, please allow me to share once again my PowerPoint for some reminders. And, um... All right, so 
Once again, thank you very much to our speaker. And we'd like to thank once again all of our participating schools, to all the administrators and faculty and staff members on behalf of De La Salle University Das Marinas, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research and the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee. We'd like to thank all of you for joining us this afternoon. We'd also like to thank the technical support team, the LSUD Center for Innovative Learning Program headed by Sir Paul Notorio and the members of the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee headed by Engineer Rizali de Armas, Dean College of Engineering, Architecture and Technology, and Dr. Pat Alcartado, Dean College of Education, through the guidance of our Vice Chancellor of Academics for Academics and Research, Dr. Marco Saez. Thank you very much, sir. Before we finally come to the end of the program, here are some important reminders. So please mark your calendar for our peak webinar on February 10. It's about online formative assessment. Okay, so we, we hope to see all of you on February 10, our next webinar schedule. And for the certificate, so here's the instruction, log in to this um, uh, link, uh, go to a courses, click enroll, input the access code. So uh, specifically for this webinar, the access code is JASLTFWD. You can either go to the modules and look for the webinar evaluation module or go to the assessment and answer the survey. After completing the survey, you will automatically receive your e-certificate. You can download your certificate by going to your profile. If you have encountered any problems about uh, your, your, your registration and your e-certificate, this email webinars at dlsud.edu.ph. By the way, we have a very important reminder, survey, um, accomplishing the survey form it will only be open until January 29, 5 p.m. So please accomplish that as soon as possible. All right. So that ends our fourth online engagement. Again, thank you very much. On behalf of the LSUD, we would like to thank all of you for joining us this afternoon. Let us all live Jesus in our hearts forever. Thanks, everyone. See you next time.